you're a graduate geologist in the mineral exploration industry, one of your first jobs is likely to be on an RC drill site. So here's a quick rundown on how RC drills work and why they're used. It'll help you to understand what's going on at the drill site and why the holes are being drilled with this method. These rigs are a type of percussion drill. The principle is similar to a jackhammer that most people would be familiar with on construction sites. Compressed air is used to drive a pneumatic hammer that breaks away pieces of rock with a hardened bit. On a percussion drill rig, the pneumatic hammer is fitted to the end of a string of drill rods. Compressed air is pumped down inside the drill rods to drive the hammer, cool a bit and clear the broken rock from the hole. This rig is using an external compressor that compressor supplies air to the rig via that blue hose. Some rigs use an onboard compressor or a combination of an onboard compressor and an external booster compressor. Early designs used a single air hole down the centre of the drill rods. The air and the broken rock returned to the surface in the space between the drill rods and the wall of the hole. This system is referred to as open hole percussion drilling. It's simple, fast and still used today on drill holes that don't need to be sampled, like blast holes for explosives. The disadvantage is that drill cuttings returning to the surface get contaminated with material from the wall of the hole, including water from faults and aquifers. RC stands for reverse circulation, because the compressed air used to drive the drill flows in the reverse direction to the original design. Drill rods on these rigs have dual walls. Compressed air is pumped down between the outer and inner walls and comes back up with pieces of broken rock through the centre tube. This reverse flow direction keeps the sample away from potential sources of contamination on the journey back to the surface. The bit on the end of the hammer has tungsten carbide buttons that break away chips of rock. Air coming out of the hammer passes around the outside of the bit through those grooves, picks up the pieces of broken rock and blows them back into those two ports on the face of the bit. The ports channel the mix of air and rock chips into the centre tube of the drill rods so it can return to surface. Some of the air also goes back up the hole outside the drill rods to keep the hole clear and to stop any rock and water falling down the hole and contaminating the sample. That air, plus any water and rock from the sides of the hole, comes out of the exhaust at the top of the hole. When the sample and the air inside the rods reach the surface, they come out through a swivel on the top of the rods, through the sample hose and into a cyclone. The mix spins around inside the cyclone and centrifugal force pushes the pieces of rock outward to the wall of the cyclone, where they slow down and fall to the bottom. Air and some fine dust passes out through the top. The sample falls through a splitter at the bottom of the cyclone. The splitter cuts the chips randomly into a small sample of about two kilograms for assay and the remainder into a large sample for other types of analysis. Most splitters can be adjusted to produce the two kilogram sample, even if a larger bit or a longer sample interval produces more drill cuttings. When the airflow is stopped to add another drill rod, water and debris from the walls of the hole can run down to the bit and contaminate the sample. The splitter is swung away from the bottom of the cyclone during this process to avoid contamination. When a new hole is started, the boom of the rig is set to the required angle, measured with a built-in dip meter. But deep holes tend to curve away from the original angle because the drill rods are slightly flexible. The orientation of the hole has to be measured so that the exact position of each sample can be calculated in 3D. An orientation tool is sent down the hole at regular intervals to measure the dip and azimuth of the hole. The tool uses a combination of a clinometer and a magnetic compass or a gyroscopic sensor to read the dip and azimuth of the bottom of the hole. When the tool comes back to the surface, the data is read with an external sensor. So that's how the rig works. Now let's look at why we use this type of drilling. 
RC drilling is commonly used when exploring early stage prospects because it's fast and relatively low cost per metre. It's also the method of choice for resource definition drilling in advanced projects that are near the surface. Again, that's because of the speed and low cost, but also because the large diameter hole generates a more representative sample. That's particularly important in gold deposits where the grains of gold may be distributed very erratically. The main limitation for RC drilling is depth. Beyond about 400 metres, it becomes effectively impossible to lift the column of air and drill cuttings inside the rods with compressed air. For most practical purposes, the limit's more like 250 metres. Deeper holes will almost always require diamond drilling, which we'll cover in a separate video. In some cases, the first 200 to 300 metres of a hole will be drilled with RC to reduce the cost, and the rest of the hole with a diamond rig. This is called pre-collar with a diamond tail. So that's a quick summary of how RC drill rigs work and why we use them. Our next video will cover some detail on how and why different samples are collected from the drill cuttings and the geologist's responsibilities in managing the rig and collecting the data.